I mean, this idea, like, I'm in university, it's not time for me to work on a business yet. All right, then you're just going to be years and years behind, you know, 20 years behind somebody like me. No, just start today. Nicholas says, Leoto and Derek, thank you for your wisdom. In summary, goals evolve. Uh, you must as well. Train yourself to create and add more value to the network you want to be part of. Maintain discipline and focus on your actions, which allow you to achieve the end goal. Be open to learning new things. Do not allow your pride to hinder your progression. Dissect the information to improve your skill sets uh, a little better each day. will give you tremendous results over time. Uh, do what you have to do, when you do, even when you don't want to. Choose your pain and leave your excuses at the door. Yeah, you, you always make nice summary statements, Nick. So uh, you didn't disappoint. You've, you've done it again, sir. You've done it again, and good for you. Um, yeah, your, your goals don't care about your excuses. You can have one or the other. You can just have excuses, or you get to accomplish your goals. Your goals don't care about your excuses. They only care about your, your work and your behavior and your, you know, your uh, dedication and commitment to more winning. So uh, you'll decide how much winning is, uh, is appropriate for you. And uh, most people, there'll be very little winning. So you might as well just call it losing. They'll be career losers. So don't, don't be that, don't do that. Don't under, underperform your real potential. Um, Peter says, hey Derek, when you first started after finishing university, who are the main mentors that had the highest impact? Uh, are they still with you today? And how did they help you develop into the person you are today? Well, there's a, there's a misunderstanding in your question, Peter. So if, if you don't start until you finished college, <laughs> <laughs> then um, I mean that you know I'd, I'd be 20 years behind. Um, I made my first entrepreneurial money when I was seven. I was, you know, all sorts of little things around the neighborhood. If I could shovel some snow, or cut some grass, or rake some leaves, or trim some bushes, or paint a fence, or wash a car, um, you know, build a compost bin for the neighbor. Whatever I could do, uh, I was looking for little projects that I could do. Walk a dog. Whatever little projects that I could contribute to to make a few dollars as a kid, you know, as, as a little kid dragging a lawnmower around, uh, knocking on doors, asking if I could cut their grass for a few dollars. So, uh, you know, the, the time to, to start entrepreneurship, you know, if you haven't started already, then the time is right now. But the ideal time is a long time ago. The ideal time is a long, long time ago. And you know, I, I continued that trajectory. When I was 10, I had a paper route. You know, when I was 11, I had four paper routes. And I just continued that and just found more opportunities. And, you know, how, how, could I, how could I free up my time? By the time I had those four paper routes, I just had other kids in the neighborhood do them. I wasn't doing the paper routes, most day, almost ever. Um, I had other kids in the neighborhood do that, and they would keep 75%, and I would get 25%. And, uh, you know, so I got paid for my one paper route uh, while doing one, but I also got paid for my one paper route while doing zero because I was a good manager. Even by 11 years old, I could see that opportunity. You know, and by the way, you weren't allowed to have more than one paper route. That was that was abnormal. But the you know the newspaper let me do that because uh, I had high levels of customer satisfaction. I never I never complained. I never made excuses. I never gave them an excuse why the papers weren't delivered. They were always delivered. So I, I asked them to give me more, and they did. And I maintained those standards, so they kept giving me more, and everything was good. So you, you don't wait till, I mean, this idea, like, I'm in university. It's not time for me to work on a business yet. All right, then you're just going to be years and years behind. You're going to be, you know, 20 years behind somebody like me. And, uh, okay. Wait till you finish university, fucking dummy. Wait, wait till you finish university. Uh, no, just start today. Start today. If you didn't start in the past, then start today. Start looking for where are there opportunities that you can use some of the you know knowledge and wisdom that you'll you'll learn through this course and apply it and monetize it and make a better life for yourself. Diego says, uh, Derek, thanks for bringing the legend Leoto Machida. How do you build strong relationships with your mentor in the past? Uh, thanks for the time. Um, I mean, you got to show up for a consistent. You got to show up consistently. You got to not be a cunt. If you're, you know, if you're a soft loser, then um, you're not going to have high quality people around. Why, why would you? Why would the best people in the world want to hang around with your soft bitch ass? 
Why would that be? Uh, so you, you have to be their best option. You have to be you know, respectful of their time, contribute to their success. Um, you know, if, if you want high quality people to spend time with you, you're gonna have to be you know, a significant uh, you know, contributor to their lives as well. You're gonna have to make sure that their, their time is well spent because they're very aware that they have limited time, et cetera. So um, yeah, be, be mindful about that. But, if I have to tell you every every way to do that, then you know, just I guess it's going to be a long road for you. But you know, show up consistently. If you if you have a good mentor uh, helping you at something, do the work. Do the work, just like he and I both said. Uh, nobody cares about your excuses. I don't care about. I don't want to hear anybody's excuse. Some people are confused. Then say, Derek, Derek, what is the Ten Commandments of wealth? Not the ten maybes of wealth. It's the ten core things that you're going to need to know about in detail if you'd like to accumulate significant wealth in your lifetime. Click this link up here to find more information of exactly what is the Ten Commandments of wealth, how is the program structured, what's inside of it, how are you going to benefit from it. If you're doing well already and you'd like to do better, click that link and find out more. There's over a hundred hours of content in this program. I've interviewed dozens, dozens of world champions that shared what it took for them to win to be the top, top, top Hall of Fame athletes in their respective areas. And I brought a lot of other superstars in there from business, from legal, people that are real world entrepreneurs and made serious money as I have myself. We all share with you what are the foundations you're gonna need to know if you wanna be successful yourself. Be a chooser, not a loser. Click that link, find out more. I'll see you inside.